Well, good morning. Today we're going to grow some red Napa cabbage. Be right back after the break. Well, welcome back. These are the seeds I got for the uh, red Napa cabbage. I got them from johnnyseed.com. This is called Red Dragon. Red Dragon. Um, check them out, johnnyseed.com. They got a whole bunch of cool seeds on there you might want to check out for your own garden. Um, this is a this Napa cabbage grows really great in the fall. Um, I like to start this in the, the seeds in a starter cup like this and we'll get them started in the seed starting tr uh, rack today. And then we're gonna uh, plant these out in the earth bed, as well as in some five gallon buckets, just to show you that they can be grown either way. So let's get these uh, seeds started and we'll watch the progression of these all the way up until the day we harvest. So let's get started on these seeds. Okay, here's how I start all of my seeds from I use a 10-20 starting tray and I like to use the ones with the drain holes because I start my seeds outdoors so I don't uh, have a problem with the drainage of the uh, water seeping through and getting anything wet on the inside of my house or the inside of an indoor container, seed starting container because I, I do all my seed starting outside. So I like to have the, the drain holes in mind because I want to keep my cuts, I want the water to fall completely through my cups. and. Um, and let me add water as needed instead of them standing in water for too long of a period of time, which rots my seeds. Okay, so that's, how, that's why I use the 1020 drain um, tray. Now I use my cups, my seed starting cups. I like to use the ones that have a, a you know, at least a two to three inch deep uh, cell because I want to get a good root system through here before I try to push, pull that uh, little seedling out of there. Next thing I do is I add my seed starting mix and I make my own seed starting mix. So if you want to learn how to make this stuff at home, you can. Uh, we have a video on our channel that explains how to do that and demonstrates it pretty clear. Or you can, if you only have one or two trays to do, then just simply go buy some seed starting mix at your local nursery. Um, for me, I have many, many seed trays that I need to start. So it's more economical for me to make my own seed starting mix. Okay, so next thing I do is I use the mix. And I fill up my tray, my seeds, seed starting cells. Once I have it good and leveled off like this, then I come back through here and I mash in all of these seed cells. Mash them in good and tight. Use your fingers, push them down in there because this thing is just full of air. And if you have air inside these cells when you're trying to start your seeds, they're not gonna germinate. You know, you're just wasting your money and your time and very disappointing. So you want to keep these things good and tight when you get ready to start. So push them down good. And once I have them down packed in there pretty tight, the next thing I do is I pre-moisten. Some people pre-moisten their soil before they put it in, but I've always found it easier to do it like this. So you can do it either way you want, it's up to you. So now that I got it tight, I pre-moisten each cell by flooding it a little bit. Okay. Let that soak down just for a few seconds. You see it just gobbles up that moisture, it's so dry. And once I got it where I don't see the water standing anymore, then I tamp down the tray. Now it's really good and tight and it's moist. I'm gonna use some um, spinach seeds here for this demonstration simply because the seeds are nice and big and you can see them on the camera. Here's the seeds. 
Now what I like to do is I like to put two to three seeds in each cell. I'll let those seeds germinate and as the seedlings get up mature a little bit bigger where they're an inch or so tall, I'll come in with a pair of scissors and snip off, you know, the weakest looking seedlings and keep the best one. So I thin it down to where I have one seedling for each tray. So let's start out by putting a couple seeds in each one of these cells. And I try to make sure that I get them kind of close to the middle of the cell because if you don't, they run out to the end, you know, to the edge of the cup. And I just don't like them to grow down the edge of the cup. Okay. After I get the, uh, the seeds in the cups, I'm going to come back and I add in some more soil and level that back off again to where you got right at about a quarter of an inch of um, soil on top of those seeds. And right now this looks like I got more than a quarter inch, but keep in mind, it's full of air. So once I get it in there, again, I mash it down a little bit. I hit it with a little bit of water. You'll see it sink down some more. So I'm, I'm getting to that quarter inch, that magic quarter inch mark I'm looking for of soil over the top of the seed. You don't have to add very much water that time. And again, I tamp it down. And the last thing I like to do is I always put a tag in my seed trays. I like to write on what that seed is, what that tray is, and what date that I planted it. Okay, then I stick it right into the corner here. Okay, you got my red Napa cabbage seeds planted. I'm stick them in the seed starting rack and get this show on the road. Okay, red Napa cabbage is in the rack, ready to grow. So we'll be back in the you know the days ahead, and we'll watch the progression of these, and you know until we get them hardened off and planted out in the containers or in the earth bed. So we'll see you soon. Well, a red, red Napa cabbage has been in the seed starting rack for two weeks today. I thought you might want to give a little update and take a look at where these seedlings are. Let's check these out up close. Well, they've all emerged. It looks like I've got, to me, it looks like a 99% germination rate. You can already see that the leaves are pretty red compared Here's where it looks like I got an, uh, a green Napa mixed in with them by, the seeds were mixed up by accident, but you can look at the difference in the two seed, uh, the two leaves, how much difference in color there is. But these will change colors and get a lot darker as time goes on. But let's give these about another week in the rack and um, then we'll uh, harden them off and we'll get them out and get them planted. So. We'll be back and let's look at them again in about a week. Well, our red Napa cabbage has been out on the hardening table for about three or four days now. It's hardened off and it's ready to go. So today we're going to put some in some um, five gallon buckets. I know you were wanting to uh, see how to do this if you didn't really have an earth bed and you didn't have you know much room at your house you could do this in buckets if you want to so we'll put some in some five gallon buckets um and let these grow and we'll put some in the earth bed and do it both ways so let's get started okay we're ready to get started i'm going to use five buckets the, uh, the container soil that I'm using right here is my own blend. Uh, there's a video that I, I put together on how to make your own container soil at home. Nancy will put a link to that up on here so you can go check that out. But that shows you how I made this um, container soil. And if you only have just a couple of buckets that you want to do, just go to the local nursery and buy yourself a bag of potting soil to do this. That um, This is for 
I'm making, I make this up because I make uh, lots of containers, so it's more economical for me to make it up in mass like this. So this is how I do it. First thing we want to do is get you some five gallon buckets. And of course you want to drill yourself in, you know, five or six holes in the bottom. And I use a three quarter inch hole. Check that out. I evenly space them out and don't worry about the soil leaking through the holes in the bottom. Believe me, that peat, when it gets wet, will it will clog up them holes where um, the, the amount of soil that comes through there is negligible. And um, in fact, you end up sometimes having to come out here and sticking your finger in there to kind of unclog them a little bit so that it will drain out. But that's not a big deal. That's how you do it. Then I take the soil and I fill the bucket up until I'm about three inches from the top. I got the soil in. The next step is I want to put in um, a pretty heavy dose of uh, blood meal to push the nitrogen so I can get a lot of foliage growth on this, uh, on this cabbage. So let me get the blood meal. I usually put right out about just a little handful like that. That to me is about three tablespoons of my hand. I know how it feels in my hand, so that's how I measure it. <laughs> Nothing scientific. I put one of those in each one. And then I'm going to water that in real good and let it soak down and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, the water has soaked down through. What I do at this point is I add some more container soil and get it on up to about one inch below the top. Let's get that evened out in here. See, I leave it down a little bit low like that because that gives it sort of a basin. So whenever you're watering it, you can, um, it's got somewhere for it to catch the water. Okay. And the next thing I do is I just go right to the center and I pull a hole in there with my hand. You see how deep I'm getting it? About that deep. I'd say about four inches. Then I take another little handful of uh, blood meal and I mix that in that hole. Then I take me one of these beautiful red Napa cabbages. I carefully get it out. Very careful pulling it apart because they're tangled up when they're this big. Now I put that in and I pack it nice and tight. That one's ready to go over to the grow table. Okay, let's get another one in here. Pull my hole with some more blood meal in. Get out a nice napper. There we go. Hey, let me get the other three in. Okay, I got all five in. Let's take these over and get them on the grow rack so we can water them in a final time. Okay, we got our red Napa cabbage in the buckets, got them growing. So uh, 
We'll keep our eye on this over the weeks ahead and we'll, we'll see how they develop and uh, share that with you. Now it's about to rain, so I think I'm gonna get rained out today. I'm not gonna be able to get the, um, the plants put into the earth garden. So I'll try to get those in the morning, uh, you know, as long as the weather's permitting. So hopefully I'll see you back here in the morning and we'll put the uh, remainder of these uh, little seedlings out in the earth garden and get them started. See you in the, see you in the morning. Well, we got the two rows of red Napa cabbage in this morning. I hope that, uh, that the lighting's good on this part of the video for you. It's uh, re very overcast and I got out here very early um, because the rain is still, <laughs> still coming and I'm trying to beat the rain, but I wanted to get this in the ground ahead of the rain because God always puts such beautiful nitrogen in the rain, really helps my garden. So getting in front of that rain is a big deal for me. It's a blessing. But anyway, I got the two rows in. Um, they they looking pretty pretty healthy, pretty good. We'll keep uh, our eye on these in the days ahead and we'll share with you uh, the progression of these beautiful red Napa cabbage all the way up until harvest. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks and check on the progress of these fellers. We'll see you soon. Well, a red Napa cabbage has been out here for two and a half weeks and it's really making some progress in these buckets. I'm uh, pretty pleased with the performance. So we'll be uh, coming back and getting a hold of these pretty soon and harvesting them. So we'll be back with another update in a couple more weeks. See you then. Well, here's our two rows of red Napa cabbage. They've been in the ground for about a month now, doing some real good growth on the foliage, getting, getting uh, bushy and bigger. So we're looking forward to the days when uh, that thing gets nice and, and fo starts to fold up to the top where we can get that beautiful Napa, cab Napa cabbage heart out of there. So it's got a beautiful color. I'm just not used to seeing them look that way. They're usually a bright green, but these are red. So we'll be back shortly to take a, another look at them when they get a little bit mature, more mature. We'll be back soon. Well, here we are over with our five gallon buckets of our uh, red dragon, red Napa cabbage. These things are absolutely gorgeous. I love the color of them. They're doing really good. They're growing um, really intense now that the cool weather has set in here in Florida. Uh, it's getting late fall now, so that's when they thrive the best. They got some brilliant red color in there and they're getting the vertical growth. So these won't be very much longer and we'll be able to harvest them. So. We're going to keep a good eye on these and be back shortly and um, take a look at them when it's time to harvest. 
Now let's also go over to the earth bed and check out the one, the two rows that we planted over there. They're looking good as well. So we'll be back soon. Well, here's our two rows of uh, red Napa cabbage, the red dragons. They're out in the earth bed and they're really looking good. They're, um, they're marching on. I'm, I'm really happy with them. The cool weather's starting to set in now, so they're going to uh, really, really get some, um, some good growth on them. So they're getting vertical, just like the ones in the five gallon buckets. So we'll be back soon in the days ahead and we'll get a good harvest out of these. And I look forward to that. So we'll see you back in a few weeks. Well, our, our Napa cabbage, our red Napa cabbage, our red dragon, um, they're ready to get, come up and uh, be harvested. So uh, me and my little buddy here, we're going to harvest some of these today and she's going to make some kimchi and we're going to take some to her mama so she can make some. But this is a beautiful cabbage. I just wanted to harvest some and, and let you take a look at it up close. You can tell when this stuff's ready to harvest because the leaves tend to fold down and leave the middle vertical core of this um, growing straight up. And that's what you really want for the kimchi. So what I do is I take these uh, leaves and I push them down just like that. I'm taking me a nice long knife. And I cut it. Mm. This is what you're looking for with Napa cabbage. This is the part you want. Isn't that a beautiful red Napa? Now, you can eat some of these leaves that we're cutting off around the edges. You can cook, you can cook those and eat those as well, but this is the part that you want for the kimchi. This is the really tight, condensed, packed. And when we get over to the harvest area, I'll cut one open um, so you can see the inside. So. Me and Nancy, we're going to grab up a bunch of these and get them harvested and we'll go over to the containers and they, they did quite well also. So we're going to harvest a couple out of there and get these ready for, uh, for the kitchen. So let's get started. Here, baby. Here's your first one. Well, these, these cabbages did great in the five gallon buckets as well. So let me peel this one back and show you. Isn't that beautiful? There's my core that I'm looking for. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, let's take this over to the uh, harvest area and let's, let's process these things out. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, we're making plenty of kimchi with this, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, me and mom. Your mama Look. gonna like this? She's gonna love this. Oh yeah. It's gonna make some real nice kimchi. Ooh. Very pretty. Oh, I love those colors. I bet the chickens are gonna like some of them leaves too. Yep. Well, how many did we get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's enough for uh, two jars, right? Well, it's actually probably about four jars. Four half, jars? Four half gallon jars. Oh, least. that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's going to be good. Okay. 
lots of kimchi. Well, we sure had fun growing this red red dragon Napa cabbage, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, it's going to make a nice pretty kimchi for you and your mama. I'm glad y'all got it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this may be something you want to try in your fall garden this year. And this will grow in the spring as well if you just get it in early before it gets real hot. So make it one of, one of your first... Uh, first um, vegetables you plant in your spring garden. But anyway, we thank you for watching. We hope you learned something and had a fun mm -hmm. um, tagging along with us on this journey of this beautiful uh, red Napa cabbage. So until me and my little buddy here, see you next time. <laughs> Always remember, by his hands, we are fed. fed. Give, Give us, Lord, our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day.